I'm going to be recording. There it is. I see it. Hello, everyone. Our Spirit Sessions fam, we love you. Come on in. Let's get together. Let's hug each other. Let's take care of things. How have you been doing in the last month? What kind of things have you been struggling with? I think we've all had a lot of similar struggles. And what does it really mean to stay in the light? What does it really mean to be living in our heart's desires in the weirdest times on the planet? It's kind of exciting in a way. So today we have an amazing guest along with Bex Marie, Rhonda Elliott. We have the amazing Darius Berzande, and we are so glad to sit here and get the encouragement and the knowing of what we need to know to go forward. So come on in, join us, share out the show. We are pre-recording it for next Sunday, so we'll still be answering your comments when we get there, but it's a pre-recorded show and we'll still be there. So Rhonda, take us away. Thanks. Thanks, Teresa. And I just want to, because we were recording on Remembrance Day in Canada and Veterans Day in the United States, just want to give a shout out to all those men and women who serve the greater good, the greater good of the light. And those who have gone before and made our countries free, kept us from tyranny. Just wanted to shout out an acknowledgement for all those brave souls who have paid the supreme sacrifice for keeping us free and safe and doing their best at very young ages and always go too soon. But thank you all. Thank you for your service to both our countries. So Darius, Darius has been on our show a few times and he's a real, he's been a spiritual mentor for many years for me uh, since I've seen him on You Wealth um, Revolution. I know um, Emily Terrison looks to him too as one of her first spiritual mentors. He's been in the business a long time and we look to him and think, you know, he's like original guy of this uh, modality of bringing forward spiritual truths and people that are working in the healing realms. Darius is the founder and CEO of the U Wealth Revolution, which reaches more than 6 million people in more than 190 com countries. That's a lot. That's a lot of people from near death experience to, uh, to breakthrough. Darius was awakened to a gift. Through a motorcycle crash in 2008, Spirit allowed him to see the energetic pattern behind all things. His energy gift guides each session into the highest transformational energy healing experience for the listener. More than 6 million people in more than 190 countries have been touched by the energy of his sessions. Each week, tens of thousands of people are led back to the true knowing of their own hearts, helping the planet and kids beyond the transformational educational you wealth revolution has donated more than 51,000 meals to starving children all over the planet and you can just tap in there the links are in our bio for our, in the video description here and you can go to his to his site and he has speakers almost every day and they're always just you can tap into the ones in his archive and you can see their offerings and Every session is a transform transformational session because he has his listeners, he has his uh, people that he's interviewing give you that experience. So there's healing in every session with you, right, Darius? We'd just love to hear a little bit more about what's going on. And you wrote a book too, and I just want you to kind of tell us about your book first off, and then we'll get into what we're chatting about because uh, I was taking a peek at it today. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here. It's always an honor and I, I love and applaud the work that y'all do. So I've written quite a few books, but uh, maybe the one you're talking about is a book I wrote back in 08. Actually, interestingly, was probably about six months before I had the awakening experience and it's called Your Greatest Truth. And the, the weird thing about this book was that I channeled a story and the story was about a gentleman that lived in the late 1800s in Norfolk, Virginia. And I, I, not a lot of people know about this book. I don't, I haven't ever really promoted it or anything. I don't know why it's, it's waiting for the right time on the planet. But this book got channeled to me uh, through this gentleman's story. And what was really weird about it was that I ended up 
getting through the character different places in Norfolk, Virginia, where he stopped and different things that he took along this journey on uh, a, a late night in 1883. And in that story, I had the whole diagram of the city actually laid out through the story and the character's journey. And I thought, well, that is just weird that these streets were coming in, these places, these landmarks and everything else. And uh, I went back and I thought, wouldn't it be wild if maybe these things actually existed? And so I, I looked back at a map and uh, they were a little different. And I thought, eh, you know, it's just my folly, my imagination. And I and I let, you know, took a break from it for a few days and, and that whole idea. And then I woke up in the middle of the night and I thought, wait a minute. I was looking at a, at a modern map. I said, what if I looked at a map from you know, the 1880s? And so I contacted Toy Valos at the Norfolk uh, Public Library and the Historical Society. They had some maps. And many of the streets had actually existed that were in my book. And everything laid wow. out perfectly according to 1886 Norfolk. And so what the story really was about, Your Greatest Truth, was this connection to your higher self and uh, this connection to the infinite self that this person discovered uh, through this story. So it's really like a dialogue, a Socratic dialogue with your higher self. And uh, I guarantee you will awaken after you read this book because uh, you cannot uh, actually hold the same ideas or frequencies when you have that dialogue that goes in through the book. It actually sort of, I, I tell people, this book has been waiting for you and it's just now upon your higher self to guide you to its pages. So anyway, I'm surprised wow. you found it, but it's pretty, it's a pretty fun little story. Um, maybe we should it's all. Pretty cool. that book. You, I want that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I want to write that down. It's, 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 uh, I've yeah. the Amazon I, I, link in the, in, in the description too. Yeah. I want to write to the title. Amazon. Yeah. I'll have to show. I have one yeah, sitting it's, right uh, There's an Amazon link in there. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So it, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I have it all in the bio when it, the, it'll all come up. It's uh, quite cool. Do you think maybe this was one of your lives? I, yeah. That's what I, I was thinking. Do. I actually like do. Was that what you are going to um, ask the same thing? Yeah. I dipped into this life. I had a, a past life regression that was extremely powerful. And it was probably about a year before my accident. And I dipped into that life and then another life. And the life in Norfolk was as a homeless person. And I was very diminutive, meaning I was like a smaller person, uh, maybe like a dwarf. And I ended up uh, living homeless and basically dying through the cold. And I remember like the, the visual that I remember was the wagon wheels were tied in my head. And so I know research that a lot of these wagon wheels back then, the Phaedon carriages and such that they were the major manufacturers at the time, those were like four and a half feet tall and they were way above my head. And so when I dipped into this life in that session, I was able to see myself sort of through the, 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 you know, the eye view walking in these wagon wheels coming up so high. And then I remember seeing uh, the women wearing those, like those hand warmers uh, walking, you know, arms clasped with like the, the man and in their big bustling dresses and, and all of that. And so, you know, what I remember was that this feeling of just being a complete outsider, completely alone, um, very self-conscious, um, sad. It was just one of those existences probably that we've all had where we really just did not feel a connection to, to very much. It was a very sad existence being in poverty. So, uh, yeah, I think it definitely was. And, uh, I carried the remembrance of that. I think that's what blew my heart open so much is that yes. that experience really opened me up to just love and, and feel like I want to be the champion for, for justice, for, for truth, for love, uh, for, you know the humans on the planet not not the big systems not the big uh, corporations or governments but but for the little people that have been forgotten and that's not always what people think um because a lot of our system now has been like the corporate media has become kind of like the corporate fascist media so it's almost like what they'll tell you is like you know the things we need to look at you almost have to question right you have to go into your heart and really ask that question because all of us are kind of like now those little people and then the corporate fascists are now like the, the giant monolith structures that tend to control and censor and, and, and mute our voices, which is definitely not something that uh, is in my alignment and in my soul journey to see happen. Absolutely. Do you think that yeah. the media is pretty well taken over by the 1% or 
you know, they, they own it. So there's not too many private media companies anymore. They're all these huge conglomerates of, or some, owned by yeah. somebody big, I mean, big we, pockets. We're jumping, right? But, but here's the thing about um, the infinite is that now you're seeing, like just today, uh, you know, Twitter has been very much censoring uh, a lot of different bits of information it doesn't fit what they want you to think or they just want you to think. And uh, now you see Parler, which is basically a Twitter alternative, is skyrocketing in popularity. You see um, Rumble is skyrocketing in popularity. So ultimately, I think the good thing about our infinite nature and where we are in the awakening, and I'm going to get into this like cosmically too, because it's all happening at a cosmic level as well, is that we have infinite choices. And as long as we continue to create and stay in the light, as I as we talked a little bit about before we started this show, we are going to create infinite realities that we can then move our energy and our attention to. So I, I see people saying, OK, I don't want to live in that matrix 3D prison of, let's say, Twitter or any sort of apparatus that's going to censor our voice. I'm going to go here. I'm going to take my toys <laughs> and my brilliance, my wisdom and my heart. I'm going here. And all of y'all that want to be an echo chamber and just basically repeat the same group think and not really be connected to a thriving, burgeoning new world of ideas. Well, you're just going to stay there and you're going to get really bored. And mm -hmm. eventually we can choose, you know, which direction we want to go. Our consciousness is going to make that decision. So ultimately, yes, I think these media companies, people have done grass. I mean, they are owned and sort of a certain group tends to have a lot of power, but we're also deciding what we want to do. And that power ultimately aligns in us and in our ability to create new structures that we're going to give our energy and attention to. Mm -hmm. yeah. I remember um, something Greg Braden always talks about is the real questions we need to ask ourselves is who are we and stuff? How can we ever examine who we are when so much is censored? We can't even get the truth into the schools right now about mm -hmm human history and things. And so it really is imperative as we move forward to dig into the truth. Um, Bex, what were you saying? Oh, it was just, it was helping, you know, it was reminding me of, you know, a lot of people that we've had on the show have talked about the, the new earth and the old earth and how they're splitting now. They're becoming two different dimensions, two different frequencies. And we're seeing that in humanity, that divisiveness as well. It's like those who choose to stay in the 3D and entertain that way of life are continuing to push that agenda. Those who are saying, no, that's not where I want to live, that's not where I want to exist, are helping to hold space for the new energy to come in, the new earth energy, you know, and being able to create that as well. So I think, you know, this is all going according to plan. Yeah, I'll say something interesting right now. I mean, at the time of recording this, and this will, you know, continue now for, for quite a bit, we're in a time called the Jupiter Pluto uh, mm -hmm. juncture. In the sign of capricorn and what's really interesting about this conjunction or conjuncture historically is that the last time that this is well there's been several times this has happened but one of the times historically of note that this has happened was a time period and y'all probably may know this maybe you don't I, the audience may not know but is a time period that was between 1762 and 1799 mm -hmm. and what happened between 1762 and 1799 at least in the united states well 1776 the founding you know of our nation in the u.s so this energy is really interesting because pluto is all about transformation mm -hmm. pluto is also all about rebirth and the death to rebirth and capricorn is all about structure and so what we're seeing and what you saw in 1776 right was a rebirth of the structure and the creation of the united states and what we might see is these deep transformations happening in our structures. So you have to ask yourself, um, what's going on right now? Well, mm -hmm. half the population would say, yeah, we got the rebirth in our structure. You know, it looks like this happened. And the other half is saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's, you know, we want this rebirth in our structure. So, I mean, these energies are definitely playing out that something transformational is going to mm -hmm. happen. And whether it's like in the next week or two weeks or whether it's part of a greater horizon we are definitely in that uh energy where the old systems are are going to start ratcheting down and something new is going to come forward and i'll just say i mean be careful though because some people will say oh well that means 
that great. That's because this guy's there. And I said, well, you have to really understand what systems people are playing for. And I'll let you all start to dig into that. But that's that's the real question here. Uh, it may not be everything that you seem. Don't count your chickens before they're hatched. Mm -hmm. You're not out of this yet because, uh, the, you know, I'll also say this too. Um, Mars is going, well, I'll get into that later. Let me hear your comments on that because I got a lot of news. <laughs> Yeah, one, I one thing that, that I have to comment over the the last twenty years is that politics was very boring, and <laughs> as Canadians, we never even paid attention to you guys because yeah. you're just crazy down there, um, <laughs> you know. And ours is just like <laughs> snore fest up here, right? <laughs> like we got three parties, and if you don't like them, you vote green. Um, so you know, it's at least people are aware. That's yeah. one thing I have to say of all this. At least they started to go, oh, something's going on. Before, they didn't even bother even looking because it was like, oh, it's Friday night. And I'm going to watch this sitcom. You know, I'm not really interested in that or I'm going to watch the NFL or whatever. They just were not into that. Their biggest rivalry was who was going to win the Super Bowl. Yeah. And now they've actually started paying attention to the politics and, and what's going on and starting to question, is it all what we're seeing? on here i think are you guys up there eating popcorn that watching this <laughs> yeah. yeah well no no we're not everybody's going like they're always saying but it means but we can't do anything about your politics up here in canada it wouldn't be right it would be like you come in and have a comment on ours like it's none right. of our business i'm sorry i know it affects us and i know it affects the free world but truly we can't really have a say in your politics or nor nor should we i mean really because it's, oh. in one sense, it's none of our political business because it's you guys. You're you're free. You're a sovereign state. We're a sovereign state. And I guess that's where I come from. Canada can't interfere in your politics, and the United States shouldn't be interfering in ours. I know it affects us all, but we all know. When Maybe in the physical bed, sense? Mouse who gets the blank. <laughs> yeah, in the but physical in, sense. We in the energetic sense, please, I can't go and please vote. send energy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> please hold space for That's us to come to us. You know? I like that, Bex. Yeah, shine your light. Pray for the world all the time. Pray for the world yeah. all the time. Yeah. I, I like to say um, what I've been praying for. I mean, because a lot of this, we could be like outcome determinative and say, I, wanna, I want right. this person to win or that person to win. And, and then a lot of people say, well, I just want the highest timeline. And that and that's great. I mean, that definitely, I have some stories around that, but that's really good. I would pray for the spirit of truth mm -hmm. to come forward because that that really is going to be one of the broadest energies that we really need to hold mm -hmm. to get to the next destination, which is 5D. And when I say the spirit of truth is that like the, that anything that is not of the light, anything that is being manipulated, that the spirit of truth unveil it unveil the shadow and so that goes in all areas I mean, that cuts across all people all belief systems all parties is just allow that spirit of truth to take hold pray for that spirit of truth to take hold upon the people that are involved with whatever is going on with the voting whatever's going on with the governance whatever's going on with any of these things because the the spirit of truth if it's not there then that's where we can see uh as we've said the darker energy is keeping their hold on the planet. And that that's not going to be 5D. It, censorship is not 5D, right? You may not like what someone has to say. You may not like someone's beliefs, but we are not going to have censorship in 5D. I'm sorry, that's just not it. Uh, it gets into these two energies, service to self or service to others. Mm -hmm. And if you are trying to censor or control for your own gain or benefit, or you're in one of the camps that says, yeah, you know, I, I, I'm not really sure. I like the way everything turned out. Some of these things are suspicious, but my guy won and I'm so happy about that. Or, well, actually nobody's won. Let me just say that as right. of 11, which is an angel. Exactly. Nobody's won. They're trying to put the appearance that somebody has won in order to just create sort of like a psyop that you believe, oh, this guy's the president, but, but nobody has won. There have not been declarations in the states. No electors have been appointed. And in fact, now there's a number of states going into recount and uh, a lot of things coming forward, I mean, by the minute. So um, you, you really have to step back and say, I just want the spirit of truth to shine in this situation and hold the light that if it is true, if it is just, if it is of light, that it come in and that will be the fastest step forward to 5D. And, and that, that really is uh, 
I think I think the key is in all of this. Yeah, absolutely. Truth is the most important part of this. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, as long as people continue to believe that we're free, that's a huge problem because we're being shown every day how much we're not free. It's the illusion of freedom that we've been given, but not the true freedom that we deserve, you know, that is our sovereign right. And that's what we're fighting for. That's what we're working so hard for, you know, and this this office of the presidential elect thing. What the hell is that all about? I'm just throwing that out there. Now you can't make up an office, dude. You know? I, I don't know. Have you seen all the people on Twitter that are now calling themselves president elect? It's like yeah, people are putting that it. in front of their name, president elect so and so, because it doesn't it doesn't really, you know, exist yeah. right now because it hasn't been called. And right. and uh, anyway, so it's it's very interesting. But you know, it is an angel gateway eleven eleven, a time to do this. So I think the, the key here is that we just tap into a little bit of that higher wisdom and we allow the people that are sharing their truth to come out. And they are a lot of people coming out now that are that are just saying this doesn't smell right, this doesn't seem right, and then you hear people say, "Well, show me evidence." Well, you go to Twitter, right? And if on Twitter somebody is sharing actually like evidence or information that counters what the media says is the actual truth, they block it. So it's kind of like this funny joke. It's like, show me some evidence. Well, here's some evidence. And then you go to the tweet and it's like, this has been blocked. Yeah. It's like, so you don't want to hear that. So, you know, we'll see. But um, I think that what we are going to see uh, is either way this goes, um, we're going to see one group of people very happy and another group of people very unhappy. And from that, I mean, maybe the deeper question is what happens with that and where do we go from there? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I have some ideas, but I think uh, it, it's it's going to be dicey. I, I'm going to tell you, it's going to be dicey. The Mars energies are in play. Mars is the energy of war. Uh, it's going to be dicey. And if things change, whereas they've gone out and, and, and this person has taken status and authority without the actual declarations from the individual secretaries of state, which legally is required, and they have assumed this particular title or this particular uh, outcome as theirs and you have all of this mass excitement which is really great but then legally something else happens what will happen to all of that mass excitement where is that going to go well it's going to go in the other direction like a scorned you know person finding out that that person wasn't their mate or their soulmate or wasn't true to them so it you know, we could get into some very tumultuous energies as we go into the new year. So uh, you have to really look at that and begin to to see what do we do with that? How do we unpack that? And that, that's maybe a great question for this for this session. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I know Mars is going direct this weekend, though, which I have been waiting for because, my God, has that been fun. <laughs> I have felt the anger that I didn't even know I had, and it was burning away a lot, you know, a lot of the density in me, and I'm grateful for it. But... I'm ready for it to be done. Um, you know, I think that, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of transformations happening, especially I'm hearing December is going to be a really interesting month. And 2020 has been an interesting year. So that's not <laughs> that's not a really exciting. But, you know, um, I think that it's important for people not to get attached to outcome. You know, whatever happens, things are going to change. Whatever you believe the storyline is right now is not reality. And that's what we have to remember is that we're being fed propaganda after propaganda after propaganda, whatever you see the most that the media is feeding, that is their false flag that they're trying to demonstrate to show you whatever they want to distract you with so they can keep doing whatever they're doing behind the scenes. And we know that, you know, we yeah. know that it's, it's false flags all over the place. This whole election, you know, has been one big distraction because there are a lot of things happening behind the scene, you know, a lot. And so we just have to be able to stay in our heart space to the best of our ability, you know, be able to sit with our shit, you know, give ourselves permission to really look at ourselves and say, okay, why is this triggering me? What can I do to face that trigger, acknowledge that trigger and release it so that I can start to feel more peace and contentment, regardless of the chaos that's happening. You know, that's so important right now. I agree. And I, I, I sent out a message at some point, I think it was Wednesday after the election. And it was really just um, a video where I just shared the truth that probably none of these people are really going to change your life. In fact, I'd say 99.9%, they're not going to change your life at all. Um, they don't even know your name, no matter how much you love one person or one aspect of that person, they don't know your name. 
probably not going to change your life. And despite the euphoria you may have the day of any decision mm -hmm. after that peak, your life's probably just going to go back to whatever, you know, normal level or range that it was. It's like anything a new relationship doesn't, you know, eventually love sort of, you know, it's there, but you're very excited. You have that very excited love. And then you realize, oh, this is, you know, I'm in love, but I got to do my day to day life. And it's the same thing. So you really have to look at this and say, okay, well, what am I going to do for myself? What does this mean to me? And, and put more of that energy inward to your own work, to your own gift, to your own power, to your own truth coming out, uh, besides putting it all into somebody else or somebody else's actions. And, you know, I think you're absolutely right about that, Bex, because the media has been doing that for the last four years, you know, creating all of this outrage. I mean, they focused all of this energy on this one person and had people hooked into all of these deeper root issues of anger and fear and uh, frustration and patriarchy and, you know, all of that stuff. And I know people whose lives have literally, they've had heart attacks because they were watching certain media outlets and so panicked about the world right. that they just thought everything was going to end. And in reality, if you look at it, I don't think anything ended. I mean, I'll be quite honest. There have been no new wars started for the last four years. There's the right. only other president in our recent history that did that was Jimmy Carter. There have been no increased scaled operations in other in other uh, countries under this current president. So the stock market's gone up. We've had a lot of good things happen. Sure, we've had things that people don't like. But how many of those hyper created fears actually came true that so many people were promising? You know, we were going to have a war. We were going to have a stock market collapse. We were going to have this. We were going to have that. Um, we were going to have, oh, he's going to put people in cages and all this or camps. You know, we had one nice. friend of ours, you know, her daughter, um, you know, she she's like LGBTQ. And she was like, oh, my God, he's going to put us in camps or what. And, 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 and you know, it didn't happen. So, Thanks. you know, when you look at that, whether you're looking at whoever wins this thing, you have to really go how much of that is actually going to be true and like you said it's probably not really going to change your life so you have to balance back in to your truth mm -hmm. absolutely and we have to remember that the person in the office is also more or less a poster child for a corrupt government regardless of what position they hold you know it's the government that needs to change it's not about the person yes that person may be a you know an emblem of something to you know the people whoever they choose but they're not going to save you. They're not going to magically change everything and make it better. And, oh, look, the world is as happy and as beautiful and sunshine and rainbows. No, oh, there's a lot of work that's going to happen no matter who's in office. Yeah. There's a lot of work that the people have to do to get their rights back, to fight for who they, you know, for what they truly want to experience in their lives in this world, in this country. You know, it's not just going to start here and say, okay, this is it you know, everything's better now. Yeah, they say this is where the work starts, but the work's already started. We've already been in this. We've already been going through these transformations. You know, we've already been experiencing that. The government has already started crumbling. And that's what people need to realize too, is that the structure can't stand, you know, the way it's been because it's been built on, you know, illusions and distrust and, and you know, deceit and all these things that can't exist where we're going. You know, so it is crumbling. It has to change. Yeah, I was downtown. Uh, I think last, go ahead, out, then I'll, I'll sure. <laughs> no, no, I was just going to say that reminds me of like that saying: "Be the change you want to see in the world." And I think that the dark forces in this world, there's nothing more they like than the division, mm -hmm. because a house divided against itself cannot stand. Uh, exactly. A people divided against itself cannot stand. If we all want light, we all want happiness and freedom and joy, and that. And, and if we're focused on this division and what the micro micro reasons that we're not all seeing the same side of the coin and and we just we're just divided then they win then the forces of dark win because we will never unite against the darkness if we're always divided against mm -hmm. each other for yeah for nothing for no reason just just an opinion exactly you know i'll never a, forget a story a story that i heard from um one teacher when I was at a SETI and he talked about uh, this uh, vision he had or this knowing he had about uh, what was happening like over the battlefields in the Civil War. And he said that uh, there would be these uh, visions of like these lower fourth dimensional beings, you know, demons, archons or whatever. 
and they just literally were um, hovering over these battlefields as people were being slaughtered and fighting, you know, for the United States and whether there were there was going to be secession or not, and they were just consuming all the suffering, consuming all of the louche energy, which is that fear energy, which is called loot. And it's food for these lower, you know, 4D beings, these demonic energies. And so th th there is a spirit of a lot of this energy on the planet. And, uh, you know, they feed off of this. And so I was downtown in Austin, Texas on Saturday. And um, they had announced, you know, that, oh, it looks like this person is going to win or whatever. You know, the media made their big thing, which, again, wasn't the actual official announcement. They weren't. They shouldn't have done that, mm -hmm. uh, according to my research. But they did. And people were cheering and people were excited. People were blowing their horns and people were happy. And so I, I really felt into that. And I was really happy because I could feel everybody's joy. I was like, yeah. wow, people are so happy right whether or not i agreed or didn't agree it was beyond the issue i was like i was just feeling joy of people who were feeling it and what was interesting was i thought about this and i'm like you know there was one group of people in the protest that i saw and one group was the the, the side for trump right and they were singing songs and they were they were pretty damn happy. These people were not upset. They weren't throwing stuff or being rude or flipping anybody off. They were pretty much like singing songs about the country and being pretty happy. Now, people might dispute that and say, oh, no, they're, they do this or that. But what I saw with my eyes that day, very happy people. But then I saw the other group and they were happy, too, because mm -hmm. they're person they wanted to win had just gotten the you know media announcement and i thought man this is pretty cool because you had one group that for the last four years is just like you know they're very upset right just every day dragging on and they had another group it's pretty happy and i'm like okay now everybody's just kind of happier we raised the vibration quotient of the planet because what seems to be the most unhappiest group that are just watching these media outlets every day going, oh my gosh, they're now happy. And then the other people are seem to be a little bit more like, you know, it's fine. We'll deal with it. It's not my religion. Politics is not my religion. It's just my, you know, I got to deal with it. So I was like, wow, we've raised the vibrational quotient. I was like, that's really good. So, you know, one of the things I think that's interesting is if you look at the timeline of the planet, these moments when we have like a group that historically maybe hasn't been as happy raise its vibration in the millions just to the level of happiness or joy this can change the timeline trajectory of our planet and so i think it's very interesting that that may be something that comes out of this that we don't realize is that no matter what happens one group being happier if historically they have not been happy will raise the vibrational quotient even irregardless of whether the people in office do things that we like or not they may rise to the level of embodying something that they had not yet previously because mm -hmm. we all elevated our energy. And that's why I always say we should pray for anybody that's in office, whether we like it or not, oh God, yeah. it's the best face for that. I do not understand wishing them ill will because they are the ones that are going to, you know, enact a lot of the policies and have to lead, you know? So I think there's a lot going on here and I think it's happening in many layers. Mm -hmm. And 90% of what the leaders do is what all leaders do. They lead their country and they, they keep it, they keep it secure and they keep it safe and they keep it, they all have like a shopping list of what they need to do. And then they have the things of what they want to do, which is very tiny compared to what they have to do. And it's mm -hmm. the same shopping list or that's the same list of duties that they have to do regardless. Uh, and that's just, they, they just have to do the day to day business. It's like being a parent. You get to go to Disneyland every once in a while, but most of the times you're just making the meals and getting the kids out the door. No. So, you know, that's, that's, I think what the most leaders of the country are doing. They're just making the meals and getting the kids out the door and doing the day to day housework that they have to do. Um, the 11, 11 portal, what does that mean mm -hmm. to you? Like today's the 11, 11 portal and everybody makes a big deal about it. What does it mean to you? I feel it is the ability to see through the dimensional haze. It's just kind of like a window that you're able to see through the dimensional haze. So it's a really good time just to con for me to connect into feeling good and feeling like a little bit of peace and bliss. 
you may be getting answers if you've had you know challenges to stop you trying to figure out get answers get a higher dimensional perspective um you know i remember the experience of having like a crossover where i went into a higher dimensional realm and it was just peace bliss uh excitement expectancy joy um there was no division no duality there was nothing i was just i was everything but i was i was nowhere but everywhere um and in in days like this i mean this is where for me anybody who knows about some of these days and these these magical portal type uh, outlets that we have on these days you just want to unplug from 3d as much as possible i would not be watching the news waiting on like what's going to happen with it just be like whatever take time in nature take time connecting be in a place where you're aligned to something that makes you feel really good and just allow whatever wisdom this is the time to get the deep wisdom this is the time when you know the veil or the uh, separation between the dimensions can be thin and, and we can have a taste and a knowing from the other side and um so yeah to me it just means you're gonna have access and use it use it you know plug into it just like you might be plugging into your favorite show make build a build a ritual around it and just spend time connecting and get the answers so when this closes and you come back to your life uh, you are recharged from that higher dimensional energy yeah, absolutely good data meditate and connect to the akashic yeah. records or whatever you, you do so i love that yeah. yeah whatever your practice is yeah you might have you know many things that you do absolutely yeah it's a powerful manifestation day and i think that you know for each of us individually and as a collective it's a snapshot day you know we get to sit in and call in the best version of our lives the best version of ourselves anchor that in to get us through you know the next year or so it's really important for us to be able to take our time and really sit in that space of, okay, show me how it feels to be at peace and content and fulfilled, you know, how it feels to be living my purpose, how it feels to be, you know, showing up of service to others, you know, in every day and being able to see the, the, the love that humanity has, the universe has, like just being in that space and knowing that we're all taken care of and knowing that all our needs are met and knowing that we don't have to worry you know, and that for me is such a powerful practice on this day that, you know, I think that it's, it's funny. As soon as like 11, 11 hits, I feel my energy shift yeah. every year. It just shifts. There's like a lightness that happens on this day. Um, you know, and I think that if enough people bring their awareness to that, we'll see a shift happen much faster in the physical world, you know, in the 3d, because so many people are able to give themselves over to just being in that space of the highest and greatest good. Yeah, it is. Um, Darius, what, what, what do you think people in general should be doing? Like, just you know, if you had to give advice to your mm -hmm. brother or your sister, and they're saying, "Yeah, I'm just so feeling so, you know, caught up in all this stuff." What should I? What should? What should you? What would? If Darius was the ruler of the planet today, what would he give? What would he give advice to all the citizens of the world who are hooked into all this? media stuff what would you suggest what would you suggest it's a great question my first thought if i was ruler of the planet i'd resign <laughs> I'd be like i don't want to be ruler of the, i don't want to be I, I, in the words Nobody of charlie wants. chaplin in the words of charlie chaplin i think it, i think the movie was the emperor or something like that he said i don't want to rule over anybody um i don't want anybody to follow me or listen to my mandates or anything i want to see people free um that movie makes me cry it's a great clip where charlie chaplin is reading this this whole beautiful soliloquy and the speech he's giving it's it's amazing um but first i wouldn't want to rule over anybody but i understand your point um you know i think that we have to go back to the knowledge of our soul and what we really are we have to go back to the knowledge of what we really came here to do and i i say you know i've discovered my soul genius i, I teach a program on how to find that um but i do think there are certain times when you have felt truly alive truly in your bliss truly connected to something bigger than you and it's those moments where it just seems like time stands still or those days when you're doing something and, and you almost stop and say, I can't believe this is my life. 
these are all of these little threads that connect you to your soul and to your truth. And I honestly believe like when we all can connect to that and we move into doing that and sharing that, like the world will work in an amazing way. And I think all of the things that we don't like on the earth will eventually fall away when people are doing that. You know, the, the ability to corrupt somebody is because that person generally is unhappy, right? And they're mm -hmm. looking for something that they can receive from somebody else versus what they have from within. So, you know, if you think about it, it's like, oh, you know, this guy wants more money, right? Because he just doesn't feel good because he never got love. So if he has a bigger house, he thinks he's going to be happier if he has this title. So he's maybe willing to go beyond his, you know, his conventional ethics to do that. Well, all of that stems from the fact that this soul joy, this truth is not really connected to this. This is not something maybe that person was really trained to look for, trained to understand. Maybe the structures that he worked in were not really aligned to this soul joy. And so we have a whole like system, really, I think, that's built without taking this into account, without really aligning people to this or helping people find it. So in the end, you just you go to school, you try to get good grades, you can get a good job so you can get a house, a car a mortgage, put kids through school, do all of this stuff. And then you're too old to take the trips and enjoy your life. You know, it's like this kind of crazy, you know, uh, falsy and bargain, right? It's like, Answer what are we will. doing? <laughs> yeah. So if we actually start from the place of like, what are we, what do we really love? What really excites us? How would we spend our day if it was our last day on earth? And we'd already said goodbye to all of our friends and family on the day before. And then we had this one day where we had to do what was in our heart's highest joy. What would you do? What would you spend your time doing? Where would you go? You can snap your fingers and be anywhere. Some people might say, I go to the Egyptian pyramids. I go do this. I'd study ancient cultures. Then figure out how to do that stuff now. You're not doing anybody any good sitting around looking at the news. You're not doing your company any good working a job you don't like. You're not creating more vitality or energy or joy for your body and bringing it into alignment by doing something that doesn't serve you because you went to school for it. I mean, I'm an attorney by trade. I mean, and I, I don't mind getting into the law right now. Cause there's so much stuff going on and I'll volunteer and do all sorts of stuff. But if that was my day in day out life, it would just be too limited. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know my life force would be drained. So we all have to make that decision. So to me, it would be ask those questions, really look into that and then start trying to, create one minute of your day where you do that or you align to that and then from there make it two minutes five minutes ten minutes expand it out expand that scope of time and eventually you'll see that your life will just dramatically change and now you're building a life around what really matters to your soul mm. and even if the world goes to hell in a handbasket, <laughs> you are going to be aligned to a different reality that will feed you, sustain you, and nourish you no matter what's going on in the world. I love that. And if everybody did that, I don't think the world could go to hell in a handbasket. Yeah, yeah. Right? Eventually, yeah. I mean, it, or it might have to go to hell in a handbasket, fall apart. <laughs> and then get rebuilt by the people who are connected to their soul. So, I mean, I'm waiting for it, right? Because like I wanted to get into politics. So I'm like, I don't really want to get into this politics. But if it was actually a really 5D aligned earth, I'm like, yeah, I I, I can do that. I've got the law background. I know, understand a lot of stuff with business and my MBA back. I'm like, yeah, I could rebuild the whole society from that standpoint. But I'm not going to build something that's, you know, right now built on sand. So, you know, I, I think we, we will have a time you know, side of it where people who are aligned to their soul and have that purpose will, will come in and be able to really serve and rebuild something that is totally aligned to that in the world. Very cool. I'm holding um, space for I that. Just, I love that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's so wonderful. Um, I, I guess um, just want to give a little promo of your show because you bring forth a lot of healers and a lot of people that help people get into like your own programs, but then you bring forth a lot of healers and people get people back into their own original blueprint or their own original soul call. So um, yeah. just tell us a little bit about what you do and, and that's going out here. Yeah, when I um when I was going through a tough time, I had the 
you know, the motorcycle accident. A lot of people don't know the story, but I, I went over the handlebars of this dirt bike at about 50 miles an hour, went over the bars, uh, landed head first, bike flips on top of me. This arm basically snapped in half, you know, my forearm and I'm laying there, bike lands on me. I couldn't feel my legs. Uh, and I just blacked out and I went into kind of like a void experience that I had had years earlier in a hypnosis session when I went into that other life and then in between the lives. And, and I, and I felt after that accident and during that accident, just this huge spiritual energy, this connection to something bigger than me. And, um, after that accident, my life just completely, everything fell away. The marriage I was in collapsed and ended and my business changed. I changed. Um, it was kind of like that big reminder of like, no, 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 you're not this identity. You're not this person. You're not any of that. And so I really started to realize there was an experience that would transform people's lives I, to me more than just like knowledge. Like we could talk and talk and it's like, yeah, wow. You know, great. All this stuff is cool. But when you have an experience, it's like it viscerally imprints you. It, it, it codes you it creates an awareness that you, you, you can't forget. It creates a real connection to something beyond you. And so when I thought about, well, what do I want to do? I'm like, why don't we really build a platform where people can have these kind of experiences, not just talk about these ideas, but have an experience every day uh, in a different one from people all over the world committed to the same type of awakening. And so that's what we've basically been doing at Wealth Revolution for 10 years. We have uh, the largest online, you know, training event in energy healing and 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 consciousness. Uh, and every day we have different guests in different areas. We take calls, we help people, we send love, and we also open up an experience that can be between eight to ten minutes. And people have had huge transformations. And if you do nothing but just listen to the shows for forty minutes that week, you're going to have experiences that are going to be outside of this realm. And I really believe like it's in those experiences that you find the bigger piece of all the things you're looking for, the bigger piece of understanding who you are, what you are, um, what you can create in the world, who you've been designed to be. It's in that space where you are no longer trying to solve the problems that you may be facing using the same tools that you've had up to that point. You know, Einstein said doing the same thing over and over again is the definition of insanity if you expect different results. And it's, it's kind of like that. Mm -hmm. So we're able every day to get something completely brand new. I don't even know what's going to happen. Um, but I know that people come back from these activation experiences with love, awarenesses, going outside of their body, pains, sometimes decreasing, um, incredible things. I mean, I've had people say, I listened to that. I was going to kill myself and then realize that I was operating from a part of me that, that isn't even who I am. I mean, I've had mm -hmm. dozens of those letters through the years. Uh, so yeah, anything can happen. And, and that's pretty much what we do at you And it's all free mm -hmm. and it's all easily accessible. So it's, it's great. And like you say, it's 190 countries across the world. I've listened from Canada and even actually been on with one of your guests like years ago. Like, so, you know, I can do it. You can do it. And, and it yeah. kind of helped me find my way through this all, you know, to this place. So, yeah, one lady, she's, you know. she actually became a guest on the show and uh, she was telling me a story. I was talking to her, getting her ready. And, and, and she said, yeah, you know, I was actually one of the people you called on way mm -hmm. back in 2005. And I was like, oh, that's amazing. And I said, do you remember anything about it? And she said, well, you know, I kind of remember what the healer had said, you know, and it was fine. But she said, you said something like in the last minute, you kind of jumped in and I really paid attention because it didn't it didn't seem like it was like you, you actually were expecting to say this, like it just came in and you had to say it. And I said, apparently, according to her, be you, mm -hmm. please just be you. And she was like, I don't remember anything else from that day or even that year. Wow. Five. But she's like, I remember you said, be you. And I was like, wow. And, and, and now, you know, she's doing something very unique, very much aligned to her gifts and very much because she took that one bit of guidance. I'm going to be me and I'm going to do this in my own way through the filter of my own awareness and soul. Um, and I think that's pretty cool. And she's changed, you know, thousands of lives and, uh, you know, that's what we want to do. I'm not going to be here forever. So I'm hoping that everybody picks up the torch and they just keep, you know, going and sharing the light. 
love that. It's yeah, beautiful. The pebble Thank in the you pond so much. And the ripples go out. Right? Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so, so much for being a beacon of light. I do. I do. Yeah. I yeah. thank you. You know, being a beacon of light in this time of chaos and confusion, and you know, really helping people to find themselves. You know, that's so important. Um, you know, they may be able to censor a lot, but they can't censor your soul. You know, and that's what we need to remember is that if we can tap into the truth of our soul and anchor in that spirit of truth, it shows up in the world even stronger and brighter. And you're like such a huge catalyst for that. So thank you. I really, really appreciate you showing up every day that, you know, in the way that you do. So now I have the big question, which we didn't prep yeah. you for, but I'm sure you remember. Um, the, if you had to choose a song to be the theme song of your life, what would it be? Ah, that's cool. Well, I've been really saddened. Uh, well, I was, I'm still saddened by it, but I was really saddened by the death of Eddie Van Halen, mm -hmm. like about what, three weeks ago. So oh, yeah. um, we were, uh, we sad. went to the coast with my wife and kids because it was her birthday. And I remember st I stayed up late nights and watched probably, you know, 10,000 Van Halen videos and, you know, behind the scenes and all that. So um, I, I'm going to just defer to the song Jump. And I know it's probably wow, cliche, I love that song. but you know, <laughs> no, I, I, I think in, in my life, you know, you might as well jump, you might as well do the thing that you really want to do. Um, you know, uh, and, and, and just do it big and just go out there. You know, I love the part where David Lee Ross says, you know, can't you see me standing here? I got my back against a record machine. I'll eat the worst that you've seen. Can't you see what I mean? It's like, you know what, just eat it, you know, and just jump. Don't worry about it. We all have struggles. We all have challenges. Um, eat it up and just jump and do what you are here to do. Don't let it consume you. You consume it. And, and eventually, I think when you go out there and you make it happen, you're going to be enriched by your experiences. You're going to be enriched by those pains, enriched by that sadness and worry. You know, when I first got the, uh, the, message from somebody that said hey you should do a show and i'll help produce it i said no i was like i don't want to do this and you know for two days it just didn't sit right with me and i was like this really i feel like i need to do this i'm not sure what to do and i could not find peace because some part of me knew hey this is the next thing you need to do so i say jump you know do it if it's if it's that relationship and you're scared to fall in love again do it you know i was married it didn't work out i remember some man telling me on a plane really smart guy seemingly you know if you get married again you're just gonna get divorced and all these stuff and i remember distinctly that whole plane ride after he said that to me i just said cancel 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 and probably for three hours i probably said cancel like ten thousand times because i was not going to sit on the sideline i was going to jump you know i was going to do it again i was going to do whatever it takes so you know you're not going to regret the times you took chances you're going to regret the times you sat on the sidelines and your day was exactly the same as it was yesterday as it was yesterday as it was yesterday as it was yesterday and that really is the suffering of life um having a new experience trying something new and failing and if you fail you know what go do something else and keep going it mm -hmm. will not last forever it the, the human being our our own awareness we have an incredible ability to get back to a median level of happiness. And this goes kind of back to what we were talking about earlier. A lot of people like, if this is your happiness level and you have, let's say a great thing happen, right? How many of us, oh, we got a new car, we're happy, whoa. And then what happens eventually? We get back down there. This person became president, yay. And then eventually, you're truly not being manipulated by your mind or energy. You pretty much go back to your base level of happiness, no matter what. I've seen this in every sort of way. You know, they'll say in business, like, you know, your first million is like the coolest thing in the world. And you're like, oh, my God. And then after that, every other like million dollars you might make it, you have less and less happiness over it. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, it's the way it is with everything. So nothing really changes your base level of happiness other than gratitude. But at the same time, if you fail and you try something that doesn't work and you're like, I'm going to be devastated, you know what? Yeah, for a few days a week, and then you come right back up to that base level of happiness. So at the end of the day, there's nothing you're going to lose. Just jump, try it, do it. And Absolutely. you're probably going to find that uh, the thing that will make you the happiest is as you look back in your life, your experiences, not money, not things, not accumulations, all of those just become obligations. It's gonna be those things that you did 
where you connected, contributed, and and you you jumped. Perfect. Love it. That's great. Great choice. So back. So Come on, what's the I guess hard we don't question? have any announcements. <laughs> yeah. Announcements? Do we even have any? No, we don't have any announcements. No, we don't. <laughs> so who's who's on? Okay, this will be Sunday the fifteenth. So who's coming okay. up next week for you? Who would you want us to watch on your show? Do you know? I am not one hundred percent sure of who's on next week. I'm so sorry. I probably should look at a calendar, but um, I know one of the things we've been doing is looking at the cosmic energies, and so we kind of know based on what's coming cosmically that we're picking people that have messages that align to that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, if you're feeling a lot of ups and downs, topsy turvy, definitely come into the five D space that we're creating at wealthrevolution.com because uh, it's a godsend, especially right now. I don't think things are going to quiet down. I do not think that uh, the particular person in the office right now is going to go quietly into the night. Uh, he is a counterpuncher. So he's going to be real quiet. And then, uh, you know, the energies of Mars and Capricorn and Pluto, he's going to strike like a lightning bolt. And I think if he does. It's going to shock a lot of people because there's a lot of stuff that'll come out. So just be ready. And all the, you know, and I don't want this, but I'm saying a lot of people that are very happy right now that could turn as well so i've told people like go inward be careful you know if you live in big cities be careful we just don't know these are a lot of energies that are going to shift things tear down structures and uh they're not always pretty so just be careful and be aligned to your heart and and maybe reach out to us because that's what we're going to be doing is helping you navigate this this time and uh, a lot of spiritual and, and vibration can help you do that as well. I, I'll say one last thing, like stay in the center. Cause if you're in the, if you're in the oscillations, mm -hmm. like I'm, I want this or that, you're going to get jostled like on a seesaw. But if you're at the fulcrum, pretty much your movement is very minimal. It's like mm -hmm. you want to be in the eye of the storm, right. not right. The So just word to the wise all for the rest of the year, maybe into 2021 as well. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the next awesome. week, everyone uh, watch you revolution rather than cnn or fox just watch <laughs> yes. that and just watch it yeah take a day take your hour of news and just watch your news your your soul yeah. rendering news so watch that or listen so okay so we really really appreciate you coming on um teresa have you got anything else to add before we go because darius is always such a great friend to us and wonderful um I have five takeaways from this is one is pray for the spirit of truth. Mm. That's a good center. The next is, is raising our energy while pursuing what matters to our soul. You, you know, find out you, who you are, what you really want, and also connecting into something bigger to get a bigger perspective. And mm. then f to me, finding your base level of happiness and knowing that that's your base level and from there it can go up and down but this is your center that's kind of how it went in my brain <laughs> awesome like it. thank I you like Teresa. It. I like oh, it. So wonderful thanks well thank you so much we're going to say goodbye to you guys and we'll be we'll be even though we won't be live we'll be watching and we'll please comment and share it out and we will comment and answer your questions. And if you have any questions from Darius, just comment and we'll get them to him and somehow. And uh, thanks again for watching. Stay tuned and see you on the flip side. Thanks, everyone.